Hi everyone, this video is an update to a previous one I had done about the catalyst fermentation system. I uh, took some of my uh, experience from that first video and I applied it in this video to address some of the problems and challenges I encountered then and some of the workarounds I found. So you want to see what I did? Stay tuned and keep watching. Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Larry again. In a previous video, I reviewed this catalyst fermentation system. I did a hands-on review. And in that video, it was my first time using it, and I went through the motions of brewing a batch of beer for a real-life experience, and I give you my opinion and point out some of the pros and cons. Well, this video is a follow-up to that where I'm going to address some of the cons and what I did or attempted to do to overcome and work around some of these problems with the system to make it work better for me. Now there are three primary things I wanted to address in this video from that last video. And the first one was the ability to, to transport this thing from, uh, well say from my garage where I'm at now to my basement where, which is in my house. Uh, I, I had some issues transporting it. And the second one was minimizing the amount of tube removal steps with the tube jar to, I, I think I did several tube removal steps and of course it was a hoppy beer. so. Uh, that was part of the problem, but there are other things associated to that that I, that I wanted to address as well. And finally, I was trying to see if I can el eliminate the need for a blow-off hose. So I want to cover all three of these points in this video, so if you're interested, keep watching. The first problem I wanted to address was my transportation problem with this thing, how to pick this thing up and move it without hurting my back or spilling it everywhere. And uh, fortunately, Craft Brew, they have a cover accessory that you can uh, buy and uh, put over this fermenter and it comes with uh, carrying straps that allow you to carry both the fermenter and its stand together. Uh, much, very similar to, to the brew hauler for carboys, for example. So that was really great. I did a video, a re review video of that cover already. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I, I show at least briefly in there how I addressed the carrying issue and it was great. That, that was a good thing. The second challenge I had to overcome was minimizing the amount of true uh, removal or jar replacement steps in the system. The uh, first time I used this, I, I made a beer that was very hoppy. Uh, it was my Zombie Dust clone. Awesome beer. Go check it out if you haven't seen that already. But that used several ounces of hops. This recipe, uh, for this video, I changed the recipe to a Belgian wit beer. Also a video I have on my channel. Also an awesome beer. But uh, it used a lot less hops. So I used less hops overall, but I also used a technique called whirlpooling in the kettle to, uh, to collect the tube in the center of the kettle and I siphon off the edge. And that helps to minimize the amount of tube transferred. So I minimized the uh, tube transferred and I used a larger tube jar. I, I use a, a large quart sized jar now on the bottom of this thing to collect the initial tube and any yeast that filled in there so I didn't have to change the jar more often and that worked great and then towards the end of fermentation um, as things slowed down that jar filled up and I replaced it with a, a, a much smaller jar to collect anything that was left over and it did that quite well so I've only changed the jar once instead of a half dozen times and that was a huge benefit. The third and final challenge I had to try to overcome was trying to get rid of using the blow-off hose and going back to just using a regular airlock for the entire for fermentation period. Now this one was unsuccessful. I, uh, I, uh, you, you've seen already that I've used a larger tube jar. That larger tube jar gave me a larger headspace. I did tube removal steps to minimize the amount of tube transferred to the fermenter so there was less overall volume in the fermenter. I had a very large headspace in this uh, fermenter and yet when I went to check on it a couple days after the fermentation started, uh, same problem, foam everywhere. Uh, the airlock was clogged and I cleaned and replaced the airlock uh, I think three times over the next couple days and unfortunately uh, I was unsuccessful in figuring out how to use this thing without an airlock. So, well, two out of three isn't bad though, right folks? Uh, I, I got rid of the, uh, the transportation problem. I, got, I minimized uh, the tube uh, jar removal and replacement process. So, not bad. All right, so th th there you go. That's my, uh, my update and my experience with this system again. 
So if you like what I, what I have to show you here, like my video, subscribe. If you haven't yet subscribed, comment below, tell me what you thought. And most importantly for me, uh, consider donating to uh, the cause, so to speak, at the PayPal link down below. And again, I'll talk to you all next time. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe.